Good morning to the saints of God. And we certainly want to extend a very special welcome to all of our visiting friends. My heart is heavy today, and I'll do my level best to uh, do what it is I'm designated to do. On yesterday, as I sat at one football game, I got a news about a, a dear friend, Senior Vice President of Communications and Community Affairs for the Miami Dolphins. A dear, dear friend, spoke to him on Friday at 322. And the president of Florida Moore University comes up to me and gives me a hug and said, we just lost Jason. Uh, so I ask that you all pray for Jason Jenkins, his family. He was 47 years old and was set to speak at the uh, stadium last night and uh, was short of breath and collapsed and was pronounced dead not long after. We just don't know. We talk about death from this pulpit. We talk about life. Some of you might have gotten up this morning and said, I don't feel too good today. Today's a bad day. Think about his three kids, his wife, Elizabeth. So last night, tossed and turned and got a call from a sports executive this morning, and he was just crying like a baby. What I'm saying to each and every one of you is we put life in perspective today. When we talk about the church, when we talk about the kingdom, God has given us opportunity. And not everybody is going to heaven. Everybody will die, but not everybody is going to heaven. Our lesson text comes to us from Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 21, where the Bible says, Jesus puts it bluntly, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is Jesus speaking. So we say, you know, and it's almost become cliche in the church. It shouldn't. Tomorrow is not promised to us. We say that, but may we put that in true perspective. Jesus says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, Lord indicates authority. You can call me Lord, but you don't do what I say. So he's saying, just because you give me lip service, you will not everyone that saith Lord, Lord. Now there are those who certainly Jesus is Lord. Amen, saints. Jesus is Lord. So he says, but not everyone that says that shall enter the kingdom of heaven, underscore kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. I want to give you some context because this lesson may take a few weeks for a number of reasons. We think about, you will see the foretelling, the prophecy concerning the kingdom of God. There is uh, the territory. You think about where we are here on earth <clears throat> and then where we seek to be, heaven. Keep that in mind. Something being foretold. What we have now, key word now and where we want to go. We sing the song, this world is not my home. We're just passing through. So there's a focus on heaven, but if we don't take advantage of now, heaven will not be our home. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. So we got to do something while we're here on earth. Many will say to me, now Jesus gives it some, he itemizes, because there are those who, may do a lot of great things in the name of the Lord. So when we say in the name of the Lord, we're talking about doing something by God's authority. Last night going over to Dolphin Sam, you got people holding up signs, repent. Have they obeyed the gospel? You have those that will feed the poor. You have those that will do all kinds of wonderful works. Have they obeyed the gospel? Have you out there obeyed the gospel? Many will say to me in that day, verse 22, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? We've taught in your name. In thy name, we've cast out devils. And in thy name, or by your authority, done many wonderful works. Isn't that enough? Isn't that enough? Look at all the things <clears throat> we've done in your name. And a very sobering verse, verse 23, puts it in perspective. Jesus says, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. So for your notes, not everyone that says Jesus is Lord has made it to heaven. 
point one, point one, one A, one B. There are many who do great things, want Jesus, wonderful works. But it will still not make it to heaven. So there are those who believe in Jesus who won't make it to heaven. And the Bible lets us know in the book of James that the devils also believe and tremble. So belief is not enough. When the, the word no, Jesus said, verse 23, and then while I profess on them, I never knew you. You have no relationship with me. I never knew you. Always get the words in context. Relation, you, you have no relationship with me. And so the words Jesus will then profess, depart from me, ye that work lawless. Iniquity is translated lawlessness. You are doing something without my authority, although you say you're doing it in my name. And now, that's, that shouldn't be far, a, a stretch for us in 2022 in that you, some of y'all know what bootleg means. Oh, now, so you don't, you don't need Hebrew Greek. You just need urban. Let me put the glasses back on so I can see your exact. You all understand what I'm saying to you? Something without authorization, but yet you still. Amen. So let's, let's take a look at this. Uh, for your notes, a kingdom has, to, has three basic requirements. You've heard this before, but it should be in every child of God's notes. A kingdom requires authority, i.e. a king. You know, kingdom, king's domicile, king's house. Kingdom requires authority. A kingdom requires territory. Where is your rule? Where are you ruling? So a kingdom requires, again, Authority, a designated authority, not some self-proclaimed authority. Because you got a whole lot of, you just drive around Miami, you'll see it all over the place. You know, founded by, and it's getting, it's getting just ridiculous now. Drove by a huge edifice building. And it's just amazing how even it, so there's a reverend, doctor, name, uh, bishop, uh, comma, pastor. It's like, look at all of this. There's a building not far from here. Man's name's right on it. Make sure you know who's running things here. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And it's a sad commentary. So a kingdom requires authority. A territory where you rule or where you have the authority and subjects. I got it. Subjects. Those who are subject to the king within the territory, the area, the place where said authority rules. Let's go back in time. Brothers, Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter two. I want to keep this as concise as I can, but I got to. I'm going to touch on a couple things to put some things in perspective. You know, again, uh, when we think about what Daniel prophesied, and we want to make it clear as to who set up this kingdom, I want to make sure we understand that there is no el no plur no group of elders, no deacons, no couples. Like language, we still get letters from certain congregations, but not just certain congregations. It's becoming more uh, common. You know, first lady, stop that. And some of us, let me be clear, get, get caught up with that foolishness. There's no first lady in the church. Who's the first man then? The preacher? Be nice to preachers. Let me put these glasses on one more time. Hold on a second. I'm coming down. I think I'm mic'd up. I'm mic'd up like 10 mics, I think. Be nice to preachers. Amen. Y'all can say amen. That would be nice. Maybe that's, maybe that's step one. <laughs> be nice, you. Thank you for preaching the word. Thank you, Brother Rick, for preaching the word. Thank you for, uh, thank you for your family. There's nothing wrong with any of that. Just encouraging one another. But, let's, but we don't elevate. And there, we are living in a time where brothers and couples want to be elevated. It's not first lady. 
So in Daniel chapter two and verse 44, and I'll give you some context. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, king of Babylon. And this dream of this image, this incredible image. And so that image represented four different kingdoms, the Babylonian kingdom, the Medo-Persian kingdom, the Greeks or the Grecian kingdom and the Roman kingdom. And so this, and I tell you what, and again, Lord willing, next, next week, we'll, we'll put, the, put an image up there. It's like a Marvel character, you know, this huge image. And with the various metals indicated various levels. But it was all indicative of four kingdoms. The Babylonian kingdom, uh, obviously, then you have the Medo-Persian that took them over, then the Grecian kingdom, and then in the Roman kingdom. But something occurred, and historically speaking, in history, it, again, you think about what was prophesied biblically, but now history right alongside of it. And in the, during the days of the Roman kingdom, God's going to do something. Daniel chapter 2 and the verses 44, brethren, what does the Bible say? And in the days of these kings. And in the days of these kings, contextually, now you know it's in the days of the Roman kingdom. It wasn't the Babylonian kingdom. It wasn't the Greek Medo-Persian kingdom. There is in Cyrus, if you will. It wasn't the Grecian king under Alexander the Great. In the days of these kings, during the Roman Empire, in the days of these kings, read. Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom? Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom? What are the requirements of a kingdom? You need authority. Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom? So for your notes, kingdom of heaven shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. So kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are synonymous. Take good notes today. Don't just get to CD. In the day during the Roman Empire, God, not Babylonian, not Medo-Persian, not Greek, not Roman, God's kingdom will be set up during the Roman Empire. In the days of these kings, shall Lord God of heaven set up a kingdom? Which shall never be destroyed. Look at the distinction. Kingdoms come and go. Empires rise and fall. But the kingdom of God, the Bible says, shall never be destroyed. Shall never be destroyed. Is everybody there? And so even in Daniel chapter 2, we read verse 44. But let me just give you something descriptive. Think about a small stone carved out of a mountain. Go to Daniel 2. Give me verse 35. A, a stone carved out of a mountain. Stone carved out of a mountain. Watch this now. Daniel chapter 2 and look at verse 35. Then was the iron. Then was the iron. So again, the iron, read. The clay, the, the, clay, the brass, the silver, the silver and, the gold broken. and the gold were broken. So these, this image, you know, the head, the chest, the thighs and the leg, the feet of iron and miry clay. All that was crushed. Read. So to the, the, all these previous kingdoms crushed as pieces together. Come on. It became like a shaft of the summer. There it the floor. It just, just like dust that just bl blows away. So we as mankind can have power. We can have authority, but nothing compares to the power of God. All these previous kings were just crushed. And they just like, you know, when you have like sand and the wind blows, shh, just blows away like the chaff. Read. And the wind carried them away. And the wind, there you go. And the wind carried them away. Read, brother. That no place was found for them. No place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image came in great mountain. Wait, wait, wait. And the stone, the stone that smote the image. Gail, go to... Uh, Take me over to Acts chapter four. Wait for me over there. Acts chapter four. And the stone, read. The, the smoke the image became a great mountain. So there's a stone that became a great mountain. Daniel 2 and verse 44, we recognize that God during the Roman Empire is going to set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. I'm ahead of myself, but I got to go ahead and work this in. Now, Gail, go ahead and finish your verse, brother. Did you finish it? So in the smoke image became a great mountain. The there, that's what I wanted. And filled where? The whole earth. So the God of heaven set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. The stone that smote all previous kingdoms, they are like dust in the wind. The Bible says that stone became a great mountain and filled all the earth. Remember, foretold earth, heaven. Y'all all right? So that, and so that 
kingdom of heaven, because God is reigning from heaven, is so somehow earth is a part of this because that stone became a great mountain and filled all the earth. Now let's talk about that stone for a minute. Acts chapter four, Acts chapter four, begin in verse 10. Acts four and verse 10. This is, I just called an audible read. Be it known unto you all, and all the people of Israel, that by the name of whom? Jesus Christ I want you to I want you to understand Jesus from the very beginning by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucify whom God from and watch this now God again the authority in heaven impacting the earth that that stone that the same Jesus whom you crucified God raised him where from the dead, from the dead. read even by him, even by him. The lame man was standing before them fully healed agreed here we go this is the wait a minute there we go I had to make the scripture the stone in Daniel chapter two, that became a great mountain. The Bible says in Acts chapter four, you're about verse 11 right now, Gail. Verse up, this is the stone, come on. Which was said at naught. Which was, which was considered nothing, rejected, said at naught, not, nada, means nothing. Rejected the Lord Jesus, crucified the Lord Jesus. This is the stone that was said at naught of you builders. Read. Which has become the head of the corner. Which has become the chief cornerstone, the head of the corner. The kingdom was built upon him, the foundation of Jesus Christ. Y'all all right? Read. Neither is there something. Oh, you see, and now, so when it comes to the kingdom, what's the end game here? <laughs> Marvel end game. I don't know if you know what I just did. The end game, the bottom line. This is a stone. Jesus Christ is the foundation. Is the foundation. And you're going to see more about Jesus and his authority in just a minute. Neither is there salvation in any other. other. Read. No other name name under heaven given among men men, whereby we must be saved. saved. So now we insert Jesus. You recognize the prophecy of Daniel. A kingdom will be built, established by God of heaven during the Roman Empire. That stone that was cut, that stone would consume, destroy all kingdoms. Nobody, no man's authority will have authority over this kingdom. That stone is none other than Jesus Christ, who's become the head of the corner, the chief corner stone. Now, what did Jesus have to say about the kingdom? Here we go. We're part two of three. We're giving you a little taste of the foretelling of the kingdom. Let's talk about the earth. When Jesus came down to this earth, what did he teach? What did he preach? What did he say about the kingdom? Matthew chapter four, brethren. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. Some of this I'll read for time's sake, but let's go to Matthew 4 and 17. Saying to you with me, Matthew chapter 4 and the verse is 17. It's important that for those that are visiting with us that you recognize how clear the Bible is. When you talk about, I'll just attend the church of my choice. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you do. Matthew 4 and verse 17. We're going to cross-reference this with Mark chapter 1 and verse 14. Matthew 4 first. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Listen to what Jesus said. Read. From that time. From that time. Jesus, that chief cornerstone, began to preach. What did he preach? And to say. say, Repent. Repent. Change your ways. Turn. Why? For the kingdom of heaven heaven is at hand. hand. For your notes, remember, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God are synonymous because the kingdom was established by God who is in heaven, and that is the ultimate destination. So Jesus, while on earth, now we recognize that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So Jesus came down to this earth. Amen. And while on earth, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. At hand means near. The kingdom is near. Don't let the Jehovah Witnesses fool you, trick you, beguile you, deceive you, because they're still waiting on a kingdom. And I saw uh, some, it was on, I think, the news report. Jehovah Witnesses are now going back to the door. So don't you start running around hiding like a gang is on on your front doorstep. Open your Bible and open that door. Let's talk. Many of Jehovah's Witnesses are like, and they'll start looking at you. Are you a preacher? I said, no, why are you asking me that question? You want to talk God? Let's talk Bible. Amen. So don't you all start going hiding. Know your Bible. 
Amen. Know your Bible. Running and hiding. Teach the truth and watch what happens. Hopefully, God willing, someone saved. They're still waiting on the kingdom. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near or at hand in most of your translate King James Version. At hand. Mark chapter one. Mark chapter one. Mark the first chapter. Let's go to verse 14. I want 14 and 15. Mark the first chapter. Verse 14 and 15. I want you to sequentially see. So we know that God's going to set up a kingdom. In Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 40. If you have it, brothers, go ahead and start reading. Now after that, Watch this now after that. John was put in prison. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee. Jesus came into Galilee. Preaching the now wait a minute. Preaching the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God. Do you see synonymously how we have kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, synonymous. We know it's established by God who's in heaven. Ultimate authority is in heaven. Amen. Jesus is preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He said the kingdom of God is near at hand. Now the Bible lets us know, not to confuse us, but it's synonymous. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. What did Jesus say in verse 15? The Saying the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand or near. What do you need to do? Repent ye, or you need to change your ways and do what? And believe the gospel. Lord, have mercy. And believe the gospel. We recognize to whom this kingdom. So now a kingdom needs to have authority, a territory, and subjects. Authority, territory, and subjects. Well, how much authority does Jesus have? Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. Put it in your notes. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. Jesus says, and all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So the Bible, that's Matthew 28 and verse 18. So all power is given unto me. Who gave Jesus that power and that authority? God the Father. Where is he? In heaven. Kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So there's your authority. What does Jesus have a kingdom? Did Jesus ever say he owned it? John chapter 18. Brothers, read that for me. John chapter 18 and verse 36. Y'all taking notes. John chapter 18 and verse 36. Let's see what Jesus has to say. Because the kingdom is spiritual in nature. Let me say it again. The kingdom is spiritual in nature. I want John 18 and verse 36. And because you're such a good audience, Romans 14 and verse 17. We're going to show you both. John 18 and verse 36. What does Jesus say? Jesus answered. Jesus answered. My kingdom is not of this world. Wait a minute. What's that first word? Possessive pronoun. What did he say? My. my kingdom. So we recognize Daniel part one prophesied in the days of these kings and during the Roman Empire, God of heaven is going to set up a kingdom. Jesus has been given all authority. Jesus was the chief cornerstone. Jesus now says my kingdom. Not John the Baptist, not Elijah Muhammad, not Moses. So the nobody, certainly not any pope. God, the Father is in heaven, not in Vatican City. Our Savior is now in his right hand. But Jesus says, now, my kingdom, read, is not, of this world. is not of this world. This is a heavenly territory, a spiritual territory. My kingdom. And who is the king? Jesus Christ, king of kings and Lord of lords. Why would you ever want to be walk around and say, well, I'm Baptist. John the Baptist didn't die for you. And I mean, you no know, harm. If you're out there and you listen, if you're a Baptist, you walk around and say, I've been Baptist for 50 years. How can you say that, preacher? I say it with all love in my heart. John the Baptist did not save your soul. You need to be a Christian. And, and again, biblically speaking, there ain't none of this hyphenation. Y'all may do that carnally for various reasons. But spiritually, there's no Presbyterian Christian. Baptist Christian, Lutheran Christian, no sir, no ma'am. Not John Calvin, not uh, Martin Luther, not John the Baptist, only Jesus Christ. Amen. We've already read the scripture, Acts 4 and verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Amen. You can hate me all you want, but I'm going to still tell you the truth. My kingdom is not of this world. Because here's another reason why I'm so thankful that this is a, a kingdom is of a spiritual nature. Because if you have, there's a reason why all those empires throughout history have to build these big forts 
and then you have the bridge and you got the moat and you got to, because they have to guard against enemies because someone's always trying to attack. And here's the harsh reality. Glasses on. Some of you all can't fight. Some of you are too good at fighting. So for a spirit, for a physical kingdom, there must be a physical defense. For a spiritual kingdom, there must be a spiritual defense. So there's no need to argue with somebody. Just teach them the word of God. Jesus says, my kingdom of John 18 and verse 36, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom, were of this world. If my kingdom Jesus letting us know to whom it belongs, were of this world, then... Would my servants fight? Then would my servants fight? Read. That I should not be delivered to the Jews. That I should not be delivered. We got to. We got to defend Jesus. We got to defend Jesus. Get your. Get get every. Get your swords. You know. Get your sword. Amen. But he doesn't need our defense. See again. We have to be ready to give an answer. That is the defense. He doesn't need our physical defense. I should say. We need to just. We need to teach the word of God. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, then will my servants fight? My kingdom is not from hence. So the kingdom is a spirit is of a spiritual nature. Gail, Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Romans chapter 14. Let's hasten on. Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. Let's get to point number three. Let me finish this with that. Romans 14 and 7. Read that Bible. For the kingdom of God. For the king. See how they're synonymous? For the kingdom of God. Is not meat and drink. Is not meat and drink. Wait a minute, because you got so again. It, it, God bless the brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the nation. But when we have fights over how dare you eat a sandwich in the church building. It's the church. Oh my God, brothers and sisters, we need to be biblically competent to recognize where we are, whose we are, and what we are doing. Amen. Worship to the Almighty God. The kingdom is a, of a spiritual nature. This building is not the church. The church meets here. The biblical pattern, you had the ecclesia, the universal body of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, authorized in heaven, uh, designated from God in heaven through his son, Jesus Christ. Father, son, we'll get the Holy Spirit in a minute. It's not this building. We don't worship this building. Amen. It's just brick and mortar. But the Bible says in Romans 14 and 17, Gail, for the kingdom of God, read, it's not, not meat and drink. What is it? Righteousness, Righteousness peace, joy. joy. Where? In the, in the Holy Ghost. So again, if you want to obey the gospel, if so you have God, the father set up the kingdom during the Roman Empire. Jesus became the stone, became the mountain, the chief cornerstone. Who is the head of the kingdom? who has all authority in heaven and earth, but does he have a, but see, there's other principalities and powers. Ephesians chapter one, turn over there. Ephesians chapter one, I'll drive brethren. Ephesians, the first chapter and verse 20. I want you to have this in your notes, saints, because the Bible lets us know that as we talk about this rule and authority in the territory, the kingdom, now you're going to see that that same Jesus Christ is the head of the kingdom. It's the head of the church. Kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, synonymous. The church is the kingdom. So on earth, here on earth, to get into God's kingdom, you have to repent. You got to believe the gospel, obey the gospel, and get in the kingdom. So Jesus has all power and authority, but see, now the Father, know the heat. Know when you look at pronouns in the Bible, be, make sure you get the right context. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 20, far above all principality and power. You all over there? Ephesians 1, 20. Uh, okay, just three of us. Ephesians 1, 20, 21, rather. Everybody there? Let's go back to verse 20. I was reading 21. Which he, the Father, wrought in Christ when he, the Father, raised him, Jesus Christ, from the dead and set him, Jesus Christ, at his, God the Father's own right hand. Where? In the heavenly places. Kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, foretold by the prophet Daniel. So on earth, we know that J Jesus is on the right hand of God, at his own right hand. There's your Ephesians 1 and 20. 
How much authority does he have? Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So there's nothing, nobody, nothing that will take preeminence over Jesus Christ. But here we go. What did the Father do? And that put all things under his feet, Jesus Christ's feet, and gave him, Jesus Christ, to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. So in your notes, the kingdom, the church, and the body, headed by Christ, and we have an opportunity to get in while on this earth. Amen. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So as we make our last point this morning, how? Is there is Jesus said the kingdom is near. It's at hand. We know he says my kingdom is spiritual in nature. My kingdom is not meat and drink. It was prophesied. But has the kingdom arrived? Because why are so many? They'll go to scripture saying, see, the, Jesus even said the kingdom is at hand. It's near. Let's just keep waiting. Let's tarry for the kingdom. False teaching. False doctrine. Paul writing to the church of Christ at Colossae in Colossians chapter one, brethren, Colossians chapter one, and we'll begin reading at about verse number 12. In the book of Colossians, we recognize, because see something started. So we know that the body, or the church is the body, and Jesus Christ is the head. The father, the Bible says, wrought. He worked all things through his son. And so in Colossians chapter one, beginning at verse 12, Got to go to verse 11 for time. Let's go to verse 11. Not for time, but for context. Watch this. Colossians 1 and 11. Read. Strengthen with all might. According to his glorious power. Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Remember, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but is righteousness, peace, and joy. And so we thank God for his word. Go ahead and read. Giving thanks unto the Father. He made us meet. He made us fitting. In some translation, he says, God qualified us. We do not qualify on our own. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Cannot inherit. So God may, how did God qualify us? I don't know if you, any of you follow track and field. Again, Brother Rick and I ran a whole lot of track when we were in high school in Ohio. And so you get to the point where you got all these people in the race. Let's say you had 30, 40 runners. You got eight lanes on the track. You can't get them all in the race. So you had heats, heat one, heat two, heat three, heat four, whatever, just so you can w w bring it down. And so everybody ran in their heat. And based on their time, the three fast from this heat will then be advanced to the, to the finals. Y'all all right? So you had to qualify to get into the race. Now you can say, I won my heat, but you were the slowest. So you might have won heat number four, but you're, everybody else is faster than you. So you won that little heat, but you're not in the race to be crowned. That's qualification. So when the Bible says God made, G God made us meet, he qualified. He put us in the race. We cannot put ourselves in the race ourselves. God made us meet fitting, suitable, qualified to do what? To be to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So God made qualified us through Christ, made us fitting and suitable through Christ to be beneficiaries of the eternal inheritance of the eternal inheritance. Now, what did, what else did God do? Here it is. Watch this transition. Read. Who hath delivered us from, Who hath delivered us from, from, the power of darkness. Watch this. And have translated us. That word translated, moved, conveyed us. Into the kingdom of his dear son. Is it, wait, is, are we still waiting on the kingdom? Read. Into the kingdom. God not only qualified us in Christ, 
but he, once you get in Christ, we are translated, moved, conveyed into the kingdom. Whose kingdom? Of his dear son. So now there's your three qualifications met right there of a kingdom. One, you need to have a, an authority, Jesus Christ, all power in heaven and earth. Two, you need a territory. The territory is the church. Amen. And when we are conveyed, qualified, moved into the kingdom, we become his subjects, Christians. Acts chapter 11 and verse 26. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So we have all qualifications that are now met. And so now we're not alone in this kingdom. We're not alone in this kingdom. John, the revelator, and John chapter, Revelation, excuse me, Revelation chapter one, Revelation, the first chapter, Revelation chapter one, and the verse is nine. We recognize, you know, not only when you think about what God has done, what God has worked through his kingdom, the Bible says, in John chapter one and verse, Revelation chapter one and verse nine, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, Revelation one and nine, and in, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was an hour that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. My final point. Do we see how the Bible clearly that God's going to establish a kingdom. Jesus is the head of the kingdom, the church. When Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. What did he say? He said, and Peter, I'll give unto you the keys. Go to Matthew 16. I don't want you to take my word for it. He said, I, I will give you access. See, keys gives you access. Keys give you access. And so in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, watch what Jesus does here. Beginning at verse 18, we quoted verse 18, but we want to read it again for emphasis sake. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, this foundation, again, the stone became the mountain, that foundation upon this rock, I will build my possessive pronoun church. Jesus in John 18 and verse 36. Now, if I were you, like I've done in my Bible, I have John 18, 36. I got Matthew 16, 18, because Jesus says, my kingdom, my church. Amen. My kingdom, John 18 and verse 36, is not of this world. It's of a spiritual nature. And now in John 18, excuse me, Matthew 16 and verse 18, upon this rock, I, Jesus, will build my church. I don't want to be in anybody else's kingdom. I don't want to be in anybody else's church. And people will tell you whose church it is. Just, just stay on the line. They'll tell you. I want to be in the church of Christ. Amen. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So how many churches does Jesus have? Shall not prevail against it. Singular. But look at the next verse. And I will give unto thee, talking Jesus, speaking to Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. My church. So access will be granted for those to enter into the kingdom, to be added to the kingdom, which is the pathway to make it to that eternal realm, that eternal territory where God is now and Jesus is on the right hand of God. You cannot, be, if you're not in the church, you can't find some little alternate route to make it to the kingdom of heaven. See, that's the future tense. The kingdom is here, present tense. We were translated, conveyed into the kingdom, the church of Christ. And if, guess what, saints? As we live, be faithful until death, and I'll give thee a crown of life. Kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God. The Lord's church. Because Jesus Christ is coming back again. Let me make this final point. I've been saying final point three times. I know that I'm keeping track. Just can't let go of it yet. We recognize that the Father sent the Son. And we recognize that the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17. Ephesians chapter 6. As we Because we're going to battle things down here. We got people teaching false doctrine. You may have family members that will just adamantly fight you over just one church, a cappella singing, necessity of baptism. Y'all think y'all the only one that's right. You know what? Y'all are a cult talking all that, talking all that, talking about one church. You're the only ones you think you're right. No, God is the only one that's right. 
Christ is the sacrificial son, and he said, upon this rock I'll build my church. Jesus said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Christ said that. So the lesson for all of us is don't get out in front of Christ, because sometimes we do that. We got too many spiritual police in the Lord's church. I've seen them. And I've shared, sadly, that I have a family member that came here and somebody basically kind of attacked them. You know what I mean? You're going to go to hell. You won't, go, you won't obey the gospel. They're like, I would, I would never obey the gospel because of that person. Lord, have mercy. Still trying to peel back the onion on that. Be careful what you say and how you say it to people. Is that how you would, if you worked for in the hospitality and tourism, is that how you would address someone? If you go to this hotel, you're going to just burn in hell. Welcome to the Holiday Inn. Tactfulness, hospitality. Sense, as my grandma would say, use good sense. You invite someone into your home and you're going to get in here and eat these collard greens or you know you're better. Chill. <laughs> Final point. We recognize Ephesians 6 and verse 17 and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, which is the word of God. Don't let anybody lie to you and say, well, you know, God spoke to me. What did he say? When did he say it? Because they got to take you outside the word of God. See, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So when the, the Holy Spirit it's going to be consistent with the God's word, consistent with the will of God. What did Jesus say? He that doeth the will of my father. So how do we know God's will? So God speaks to you and he doesn't speak to me. That makes him a respecter of persons. How's God going to speak to Stephen and not speak to me? What? Why? Come on, folks. God speaks to Lynn. He doesn't speak to me. He speaks to all of us. If we only heed to his word. And so when did the kingdom the kingdom that was established by God during the Roman Empire, headed by Jesus Christ. John, our brother, in Revelation 1 and 9 says, I'm in the kingdom. I'm your brother and I'm in the kingdom. Paul, writing the Church of Christ of Colossae in Colossians 1 and verse, thir verse 13, said we were translated into, conveyed into the kingdom of God. When did this all come in? When, when were people added to the kingdom? Acts chapter 2, brethren. Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> Song leader, prepare yourself. Acts chapter 2. The day of Pentecost. In Jerusalem, the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem, after Jesus Christ had died, after Jesus Christ hung on that cross and was buried, after he shed his blood and purchased the church, the great Redeemer died on the cross. After he rose from the dead and he's now in heaven. When they saw him go up in Acts chapter 1, they gazing saw Jesus return back to heaven. His job was done. Before Jesus left this earth, he said, I will leave you with another comforter, the Holy Spirit. The sword of the Spirit is the word of God. So now God, the Father's in heaven. Jesus Christ is in heaven on his right hand. And the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. God will do, has done his job. In Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 36, what does the Bible say? I want 36, 37, 41, and 47. Acts chapter 2, come on, song leader. I'm going down, you come up. That'll make them feel better. That means we're getting closer to the end. Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 36, read. Therefore, therefore, that's it. All the house of Israel know assuredly, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God, hath made the that God the Father hath made, that God the Father hath made, designated, Chosen that same Jesus whom you, have crucified. whom you have crucified. Oh Lord. Both the Lord. Wait a minute. Why well, call me Lord, Lord? Do not the things that I say. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. God made him Lord. So it's not a choice. So if we choose not to obey Christ, you choose somebody else to be your savior. You choose another authority. And sadly, some people choose human beings to be their authority. Dr. Reverend. Hmm. Holy Reverend is his name. Holy Reverend is his name. And there's men and women walking around here talking about Reverend. And I mean them no harm. They need to be saved. But we got to teach it clearly, passionately, but most importantly, that you can understand it. God made that same Jesus whom you crucified. God made him Lord, authority, and Christ, deliverer, Savior. Read. 
Now, when they heard this, now when they heard this, they were free. so remember what we we began, we close as we began. God said, Jesus said, everyone, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Something has to be done. So when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, convicted. And say it unto Peter. Say it unto Peter. And to do the rest of the and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren. Men and brethren. What shall we, what shall we do? Make that with Matthew 7, 21 through 23. He that doeth the will of my father. If you want to make it into the kingdom, you got to do the will. What shall we do? Now, if he says sinner's prayer right here, you better do, you better do the sinner's prayer. You better pray. If he says, let me just lay on your hands and we'll be good, then you better do that because that's what Jesus said. They asked, they asked him, Peter and the rest of the apostles, what shall we do? Read. Read. For the promise is unto you. No, 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 no. Acts 2, 30 to 38. Come on, don't leave me now. And Peter said unto them, Thank you. You're trying to get ahead of me. I'm trying to finish this lesson. And then Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent. What did Jesus say when he walked on the earth? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. It is at hand. Change your mind. Turn from your ways. Do not follow the ways of the world in order to please God. Repent. Read and be, baptized. and be baptized. How many? Every one of every you. one of you in the name of Jesus Christ by my authority. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. There it is. There's your God. That's God's plan of salvation. If anyone is here today, and you're not a member of the Lord's Church, the Church of Christ. There's only one church you're gonna find in the Bible. Some may say that's big talk. No, it's Bible talk. I'm just a messenger. This is God's will for man. You won't find, you find, show me, I will buy you lunch, dinner for the rest of your life. Don't you lie either. You won't find a Catholic church in this Bible. You won't find any other church in this Bible. So something that's simplistic. You will never find reverend referred to any man in this Bible. So why is it that this world is so religiously upside down with all these reverend and people get, now we got to compare. If he's a reverend, I'm a reverend, then I'm now most holy reverend. We can't have that. Now I'm senior reverend. Because that's man. I got to be better than him. And even in the Lord's church, be careful. Senior minister. How about being, that means you're senior servant. Huh? By translation. Seeing that a lot in the Lord's church. You got minister, but I'm senior minister. Huh? Just be humble. Just serve. Amen. He the greatest among you shall be your minister. Servant. Repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Read. For the promise is unto you. Come on. And to your children. And to your children. And to all that are, and to all that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall. Come. That king will fill the whole earth. There's room for everybody to be saved. Drop down to verse 41. See, you, you can either obey this, accept it, or reject it. When they, when they receive the word, what happened in Acts 2 and 41? Read. Then they, they gladly received the word. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized. Were baptized. The same day. The same day. Not first Sunday, not third Sunday. The same day. But the day you were taught the gospel of Jesus Christ, the day you, the, today is the day of salvation. The, mm -hmm. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 3, souls. Now to what were they added? It's only to please go on up there. I don't know why you're tempting me. Please go all the way up. All the way up. Please. To what were they added? See, again, we think about the kingdom, the church, the body of Christ. Those that had heard the word of God, believed the word of God, repented, confessed Christ to be the son of God. They recognized he is Lord and Christ. We're baptized. But to... Where are they? Were, were they just, what did God do? Acts 2, 47. Read, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Translate that. Those who are being saved. The saved are in the kingdom. The saved are in the church. And when the church does its job, members in particular. See, the church is going to be saved. See, but not few, not many. So brothers and sisters and visiting friends, please recognize we as members in particular have to be faithful unto death because some who believe and even some who have obeyed the gospel won't make it because we haven't lived faithfully. We have many that have fallen away worldwide. We got to be faithful unto death. Amen. It's saved during the church, saved during the kingdom. The lesson is yours. I pray to God that something was said today to prick your heart so that you 
I can be better and more faithful to the almighty God. Tomorrow's not promised. I began with the somber news about my dear friend. I pray before we take our last breath, and we don't know when that will be, we obey the gospel. If there's someone here today, please don't assume you're going to be all right tomorrow. I don't wish anybody any ill will. That is not what I'm saying. But recognize the urgency and recognize the opportunity God has provided one more time for you to be saved. A song has been selected, and there's no other way to be saved until, unless you come into contact with the blood. If you need to, those on Zoom, put your requests in right now. If you need to respond in any way, please do so right now as we together stand and sing the song of encouragement. Won't you come?